So for the Ansco Ready Flash, and a lot of cameras, uh, similar vintage, similar design, this guy has a lever on the bottom, has an O and a C for open and closed, move it to open, and this one, the whole top of the thing pulls out, so that's your film transport piece. The shutter is this bit in the front, your red, red window for your frame count, the rest of it's just basically a light tight box. So the knob is always going to be on your take up side. So that's where you need to put your empty spool. Some of them this will pull up and some of them like this have a spring load here. So on this one you want to put it in the top then get the spring loaded uh, bit in the hole. So you want to turn it to make sure that the flat piece that goes in the slot in the top of the film spool is connected. Now you can tell you've got your take-up spool loaded correctly. So you want to make sure that from the feed side the backing paper is facing outward towards the back of the camera. It's going to be coming up and over uh, the film guide. This one's a little sim simpler. It's got pins on both sides. This guy has a curved film plane. It helps correct for the simple meniscus lens. And this is really smooth Bakelite here and here. So you're going to be just looking at paper. That's why these have such a long leader. So you bring this guy around. Make sure that it's nice and centered. There's a lip here on the bottom that's the film guide, at least in the uh, ready flash. Most of these old cameras, they're about as simple as a box camera. So you take up spool, turn it, so you make sure you're loading the paper leader into the fat side, or the longer slot rather, of the take up spool. And you get that guy through there. Hold on to it a little bit until you get some tension going. And sometimes I like to put a little fold in the end so that when it comes out the thinner slot, you can bend it under real easily. This one grabbed okay. It seems to be tracking just fine in the film guide. There's our start mark. Not every camera uses that. So you don't want to go too much past that with the thing open because right now only the paper is protecting the film from light. This guy has quite an overlap here so there's no light seals. Make sure you clamp that guy and you can feel this thing cinch that top down so it's really nice and tight. Now, a lot of these old cameras I like to take a piece of, well, I'll use the black console tape, but it's like this painter's tape. Once I'm shooting it, I put that over it. I'll show you that in a sec. So right now, all you want to do, and remember your film is going over the film plane towards the take-up knob. So you'll start to see there's an arrow. The feed is pretty straightforward. And you start to see these lines and there you can see one in your red window. So usually when I'm shooting with these guys, I didn't always do this, and it's caught me a few times. Just put your console tape over the window, and then you're ready to shoot. You just take it off when you're winding to the next frame and then put it back on. Light leaks through that red uh, window can show up on the film sometimes, especially if you're using something like the Shanghai that has really thin backing paper. So now that we're all loaded up, how do we use this guy? Well, this has a fixed shutter of about a thirtieth of a second. Um, an old spring, it could be slower, but I ballparked it with a thirtieth of a second before I tested it. And, you know, it, it ranges between a twentieth and a thirtieth of a second. This lens is somewhere between f16 and f18. So if you have a meter or a meter app, there's your shutter and your aperture. You know what ISO you've got loaded. So if you're using sunny 16 rule, 
sunny day, nice sharp shadows at f16, and we'll call this f16 a hair more, your shutter speed should be the reciprocal of your film speed. Well, if that was the case, we've got a 30th of a second, so the reciprocal of that, we would need ISO 30. That's an odd speed. It's going to be almost impossible to find. So what you want to do with something like this, even though it has a very small aperture, it has a really slow shutter, and back in the day, the film speeds were really slow. So you're going to need to be in uh, shade or cloudy, but aim for a low ISO. So I, when I shot with this, I used the Shanghai, and it's ISO 100. And it was kind of a diffuse sunny day where a shadow is kind of like my hand's shadow on this. I don't know if you can see that. It's not real sharply defined, kind of fuzzy, or if you can't really see well-defined shadows, you're going to be fine with uh, 100 speed film. Now, if you go with faster film, you're going to have to, you know, use an ND filter or shoot at dusk because 30th of a second or slower, depending on the age of your spring, you're going to be overexposed. That is about it. This guy has a press type shutter, so there's no cocking and firing. Um, it's just it opens and closes once when you hit this switch. So if that was real film in here, I would have just taken a picture of the video camera. So then you just peel back your tape, wind it on. I think I just went blasting past two. I should have been paying attention. No, I didn't. It was intermediate mark, thankfully. There's two. Do watch it though, I've done that as well, and you end up with overlapping frames and a blank spot in between frames like that, and you get fewer shots, especially since this guy shoots 6x9, six 6x9 by nine. Six by nine centimeters, I mean these are big frames, you're only getting 8 per roll anyway, so watch your numbers pretty carefully. Don't do what I did. That's about it, I hope this helped uh, for anybody who's looking at using a 620 camera or taking an Ansco out for a spin. So I'll pick the next camera in the series, and I'll see you then.